and catchment going through these chain of lakes. So you've got your first lake, this is your first lake. And you can see it's pretty dirty because we've had all these uh, winter rains coming through. So this all comes from the Midland catchment, yeah? And some of the water also comes out from, um, you know, these estates as well. That's what's making it really muddy at the moment. So, um, yeah, so today I'm just going to be talking about urban lake management, um, aeration systems um, and plants, so revegetation, um, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, you guys are studying science, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so feel free to ask questions basically whenever you want. Um, so basically with urban lakes, it's um, it, the main issue is runoff, right? In your natural lakes, uh, you, you get runoff from like the forest. That was so clear. Yeah, this was clear this is probably about two weeks ago. Color. Yeah, so it's bringing in nutrients from the Midland catchment, uh, from your gardens, you can bring in fertilizers, uh, from from the roads and stuff, you bring in organics like the fuel and stuff. Um, so that gets into these systems and it creates an issue called eutrophication. Um, anyone know what eutrophication means? No one? Alright, so eutrophication is when you have like a spike in nutrient levels from runoff, right? Which is what's happening here at the moment. This is also clay that's suspended in the water column. So all the erosion stuff, um, as you're dragging water, it's basically, you know, basically grinding at the bottom and all the mud and stuff's coming out. And also the mud from um, these estates and stuff, that's also getting in. So this is probably the worst it's gonna get. Um, so in natural lakes, it's completely different. Natural wetlands, natural lakes, it's completely different because the runoff's basically from forests and there's less organic matter coming through your forest. Uh, so usually there's, when the rain falls, it creates a channel um, and the channel is going to a creek lines and usually the creek lines have plants in it. So it's sort of pre-filtered before it gets into this system. Uh, so natural sites also have a lot of plants. So your soft body plants uh, like Potamogeton, uh, you'll learn those things as you get older if you get into this area. Uh, but they sort of help filter the water. Uh, so do you guys know how plants filter the water? Not really? No, so basically they absorb the nutrients, they sequester nutrients um, out of their leaves and they also sequester it through their roots, right? So plants are a really important component and in urban lakes they don't like too much plants because in council sites you have uh, irrigation pumps and that's used to basically pump out into um, like sporting fields, into parks. Um, and that's basically, if you put plants in there, it could get clogged up. So not many council managers uh, want plants in their system and that's part of the problem. And I think I spoke to you guys before about the impacts of koi and wetlands and stuff. Yeah. Um, so the other issue is in urban wetlands, you're getting a lot of um, koi, uh, pearl cichlids, uh, goldfish, uh, people just dump them in, unfortunately. And what they do is they're benthivorous, so they sift the floor and they release the phosphorus into the water column. And when they do that, you get problems with uh, eutrophication. Um, and the other issue with them is they eat the plants, right? Remember I just talked to you about plants are really important in natural systems. Um, so in urban systems, it's, it's just big problems because the fish basically smash them out. So most of the sites that have a lot of koi, they pretty much hammer it, right? So that's where you're getting this, these issues like this. If you have plants, uh, you, you're basically taking out clay particles and stuff out of the water column, yeah? So it's important to have plants. So urban sites, Again, I'm just going to repeat again so you get it. And when you have your test and whatnot, maybe you can talk about it. So urban sites, the problem with it is feral fish, no plants, and runoff from like fertilizers, uh, and, and that's exactly right. So yeah, yeah. So the more plants you plant, the more better it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this site. Here, the water comes out through those, see those drains there? Those yeah. stormwater drains? Yeah. 
that's where the water gushes out. That comes from like the Midland catchment. And what we've been asked to do is to control the water quality, right? So to control the water quality, what we did is we installed aeration systems and we installed plants um, around the edges, you can see them. We also installed some plants like further in, in into this, like the core areas. Um, so at the moment, it doesn't look that great, <laughs> but it will get better with time. It's partly because they're doing all these developments at the moment. You're getting these issues, right? So they're cloying here at the moment? No, there's no cloying, but the issue is basically erosion and the runoff that's coming in. That's the main issue. And also the development going on, when it rains and stuff, all the water's getting into here. And the other thing we've just noticed, like, see these plants here um, that are pulled out? That used to be planted here. I don't know why they've taken it out. Um, but yeah, these plants are supposed to be in here and that's supposed to filter the water, okay? So, so basically, part of their approval, they needed to, this used to be an all clay pan area. So you had like turtles and stuff and there's a lake called Ephraimal Lakes. Do you guys know what Ephraimal Lakes are? Or? Yeah, so Ephraimal Lakes, over summertime they dry out and over wintertime they fill up. So when it rains and stuff, it, it fills up. When it doesn't rain, it basically dries out, yeah? So part of their approval, they needed to create this chain of lakes. So this is Lake 1. Um, then it goes through like a creek line. You see where that spoonbill is, that bird? There's like a creek line across there. You get plants growing over there as well. That's where you planted. So it sort of gets pre-filtered. And then it goes to your next lake. So your second lake. And then it goes into a third lake. And then it goes into a fourth lake. And then it goes into the Helena River. It like, goes to the next lake, next yeah, lake. Uh, and and that's about it. River, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now all this is supposed to be filtered out. Yeah. Before it hits the river, isn't it? That's the yeah, driver. pretty much. That's yeah. that's the whole idea behind yeah, it. Yeah, 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 that's the whole idea. Cool. Yeah, so this is uh, Paul Van Eyck. He's he's my boss. Yeah. Uh, so he'll he'll discuss macro invertebrates a bit bit later on. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to run you guys through the benefits of aeration because that was um, one of the uh, key components of urban lake management. Uh, so as I said, aeration systems are, are, are vital. It's like essential. Uh, for, for urban lakes because if you don't have that then and you don't have plants and you're having feral fish you're going to have issues because you're not going to get good, good aerobic bacteria. So can you guys explain the benefits of aeration at all? Like any benefits you can think of? Yeah, oxygenating the water. So it increases the soil oxygen concentration and then the aquatic animal inhabitants they'll, they'll basically increase the numbers so your native fish, frogs, uh, your turtles, they'll, they'll appreciate it a lot more. So that's important. Another good impact you said was it mixes it. Yeah. Really important. Yeah, that's really important, especially in deep lakes. Um, so you have two different types of aeration I'll talk about later. In deep lakes, if you're mixing it, it causes a process called uh, destratification, right? Because in your lakes, you have your top layers, which is basically uh, warmer. And then you've got your bottom, bottom layers, which is colder and it's sort of anoxic versus aerobic. So when you're mixing it, like see what that's doing right now, it's mixing it, it's gonna activate all the aerobic bacteria in the bottom of the lake, right? And when it does that, what happens? When you activate the aerobic bacteria, we've talked about this. Uh, that's right, so that's called the what cycle? Nitrogen cycle, there you go. So. That should be in your exam. <laughs> um, so nitrogen cycle is, we applied it to all the sites we went. So you should know that by now. You should know in aquaponic systems what's required. Uh, you should know uh, your shop, even your aquariums, the nitrogen cycle, how it works, the fish poops, uh, the mucus is released from the fish. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is essential criteria, selection criteria. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, there's, there's other benefits. So when you have aeration, um, you reduce mosquitoes and midge larvae. So you know how you have your local lake and wetland, you might get a lot of mosquitoes? Yeah. That's partly because you, you don't have an aeration system. If you have an aeration system, you're and mixing... Those, yeah, yeah. Swarms of midge, the midge yeah. like the anaerobic... That's exactly right. And the 
going to be. They don't bite, but people get all bent out of shape and house prices go down. Yeah. Just because these midge are flying around. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. They're fine. Yeah. Just hold, keep your mouth shut. So, mosquitoes and midges basically like high nutrient level um, and they like low oxygen level. Yeah. So, that's one of the impacts. It also reduces heavy metals in the system. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll probably try and take them for a walk first and explain a bit about yeah. stuff yeah. later on. So, can um, I. In, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yep. So this was yep. the all where this water was was a cow paddock, and about how long? How many years ago? About two, three years ago. They, yeah, this was three, a, three a, a cow ago. paddock and a clay pan. Yeah. So what they yeah. did was they put this very waterproof membrane they, on the bottom. They dug it out. They put this waterproof membrane on the bottom, and they got all the machines in, and they put a like layer of soil on top about that deep. And when we came, they asked us to come and we planted all these sedges and stuff. When they asked us to come in and put all the plants in, it was like rock hard, like this. And we were out there planting these things with a mattock. Potty, and potty a, pukti. And, a po <laughs> yeah, potty yeah. Pukti. and it was, they, initially it was just sort of a nightmare. But then all the plant sedges grow very quickly because wetland systems are very productive. 